Hi, welcome back to my art channel. I'm G and today I'm going to be sharing my 2019 to 2020 sketchbook with you. It's about Easter 2019 to Easter 2020, but that's not strictly true um, as you're going to find out in a minute. So it's a Strathmore watercolour sketchbook and it's about 190 GSM, it's encrusted with stickers and it's got lots of little bits that I found over the years. And the first piece on the very first page is a piece from 2012. And because this sketchbook only had watercolour paper, I didn't really use it as my regular sketchbook. Um, and yet this is a watercolour painting of Cadda Idris, which is a mountain in sort of mid to north Wales, painted live on the spot. And then as we flip over the page, you can see a couple of my colour tests using aqua markers, again back in 2012, looking at how they would stain the paper or not. And then we jump forward to 2014, uh, where I'm looking at this uh, red autumn leaf, and I did a video of this one. Uh, but again, I'm still just using this sketchbook now and then because it's got watercolour paper in it. So I realised if I was ever going to get this sketchbook finished, I had to stop being so precious about it, stop just saying to myself that stuff could only be watercolour and actually get using it. So fast forward to 20. 2019 and here you can see me pointing out a couple more color tests at the top of the page but the main figure is a reference drawing that I did for the Palkia Pokemon that I was going to be drawing so I had some reference pics of uh, the pose that I wanted to use and that's the first thing that I do in the sketchbook using it just as a sketchbook. Then flipping over the page, you can see a couple of things. On the left, my social media icons that I recorded to be the sort of outgoing of each YouTube video. And on the right hand side, a color test for the watercolor painting of the rose that I did last year. Then when I flip over to the next page, you can see I'm beginning to use both sides of the page. On the right, you can see all these um, watercolor studies of parts of a bike that I was thinking, hey, these might come in useful if I have to draw a robot or some mech. And on the left-hand side, you can see some marker pictures that I've done on marker paper and then stuck on the left-hand side. Here you can see the Palkia drawing testers. So I did a test drawing in grey tones and then I did a test drawing using colours so I knew which colours I was going to use. And because they were on marker paper, I was able to stick those on the left hand side of the page. And the right hand side of the page shows some wooden sculptures, those ones carved with a chainsaw in some various ink and other media. Uh, on this page you can see a few little colour tests and on the right an unfinished sketch of a, a mince pie and some other little sort of baubly kind of shapes I aim to do in watercolour when I can find the time. And at the bottom of the page are some rough sketches of Dalgia, another Pokemon that at some point somebody's asked me to draw. This page shows some uh, ink studies that I did, trying to change a crab claw into a claw as though it's made of ice, as though the actual crab itself is made of ice, which is an idea that I have for a piece I haven't quite started yet. On the right is an image of a wild boar sculpture from the Grisdale Sculpture Park, and I decided to do this one totally using coffee in a cafe, so I was there with my water brush, dipping the brush in coffee, and then using it to actually paint the wild boar um, just a, a sort of like coffee table and there you can see the picture the reference picture I was using right next to it So as we turn over the next page you can see that sometimes I've done a whole bunch of sketches on different paper wherever I am And I didn't have my sketchbook and then I have to stick them in afterwards So here you can see a hodgepodge of images that I have where I was asked to do some phonics illustrations uh, in a sort of style of children's illustrator Quentin Blake and here you can see flies in the pie and the glue is blue. And these illustrations were done on cartridge paper using a um, water-soluble fountain pen ink. So they give this nice soft kind of quality. Uh, I'm definitely going to try using that again. Here you can see some more sketches where I was just given a simple sentence such as elephant and dolphin became best friends or Joe hurt his toe and I had to come up with a suitable illustration that could then be changed into a poster and coloured uh, and you know put on a classroom wall so that the children could help understand and access phonics a little bit more easily. I think I was asked to do about six or eight of these illustrations. You can see on these pages me working out colour ideas and trying different tones of watercolour, sketching out some little thumbnails that I would then, you know, try and do proper and big, about A4 size. And here's um, my sort of rough colour test for flies in the pie, looking at what colours I would use to do his hair and his jacket uh, and his hands and the flesh tones. And it was a really fun commission to do, very outside what I would normally do. Um, so I had to learn different skills and I got to use watercolour on Bristol board paper as well, which was something I hadn't really done up until that point. And it gives a very, very different quality to using, say, cold press paper. Anyway, flipping over the page, you can see another one of my ideas. I think that guy was supposed to be even Stephen, and I didn't like that initial drawing, so I changed it quite a bit in between that drawing and the one that I finally did 
for them. And on the right-hand side, you can see the start of Inktober 2019 as I started getting through some of those first ideas. And that's my favorite one of Inktober. That was called Prey, and it's probably the one that I took the most time doing. And again, a lot of these are done with um, water-soluble fountain pen ink and then maybe some Pentel brush pen as well for some of those stark black lines or black lines that I didn't want to run and I didn't want to um, have all water-soluble. So usually what I use the sketchbook for here is on the left-hand side, I would do rough thumbnail and on the right hand side you would see this sort of finished piece that I would post for Inktober uh, every single day in October and the reason I was using thumbnails on the left hand side is because that left hand side of paper the surface wasn't as good a watercolor paper as the right hand side of the paper was and that's just the sketchbook seems to have been made that way you could still use it for water soluble media but it just wasn't as good and didn't have the right surface as the right hand page would have uh, this was one of my favorite designs as well. It's supposed to be Santa using his driver's license to scrape snow off the front of his sleigh before he can take it out and ride it and go delivering those presents. You might be wondering why I do my Inktober sketches so small because it's an A5 sketchbook. So these sketches are all about A6 size. But remember, it's a daily challenge. You've got to come up with 31 sketches over 31 days. So a lot of the time I'll do a, a quick thumbnail and then I'll do a quick um, you know, ink piece, hopefully only taking me an hour or two out of my day. Uh, and the best way to do that is to keep them small. Um, so you can see various ones here where I do perhaps, um, you know, a slightly more detailed thumbnail on the left hand side before I then go on to do the picture on the right hand side. And I've got to be honest, sometimes the thumbnail is better than the finished piece. You know, um, I've ironed out too many of the creases and it looks too polished. Um, so it's a sort of a bit of give and take when you're doing a daily challenge thing like this and working so quickly. Um, here you can see another one of my favorite images. And if I flip back, you can see the how it started as a thumbnail and then how it became. And I think this one was called Ghost. So I love the idea of showing a ghost showing up on a phone, but then showing the background and it wasn't really there. So my Inktober sketches probably take up a big chunk of uh, my sketchbook and it's kind of a reminder to me that if I was able to produce a drawing or a painting or a sketch every single day um, I would probably easily get through this sketchbook, maybe get through two or three sketchbooks in a year. Um, as it is I have sort of fluctuations in the way that I do my work. I have like you know um, periods of like super intense activity doing lots of stuff and then there'll be a lull where maybe I don't get as many drawings as many uh, pieces of work done. I don't know if everybody is like that you know if you have sort of fluctuations to the way that you work or you're really really um, quite regimented and you have a really cool routine you know let me know in the comments below how it works for you. Uh, on this one we finish October and on the right you can see me doing some studies of armor in particular the shininess of armor and, and how those shines and highlights look and this is a, a picture by Todd Nork that I did a picture using watercolor markers of and then at the bottom I'm actually just using regular markers some Copic markers there to again look at a study of somebody's shiny armor and then we flip over the page you got a tan sketch on the left hand side of a wood sculpture and on the right one of my favorite watercolor marker pieces again a study of armor but this time it's a reference photo that I've taken and I'm trying to then paint that piece of armor with all those lovely reflections and I did that just I think using just three watercolor markers really really pleased with the way that that turned out and a bit gutted that it's just in my sketchbook and I can't stick it in a frame somewhere on the next page, you can see another wood carving sketch done from a reference photo, um, and it's done on tan paper, which I then had to stick in. And then you can see on the right hand side some color tests, some color checkouts, some marker tryouts, and some just little written note ideas as well. The next page shows some marker pictures on the left and some uh, just pencil sketches on the right. The marker pictures is me returning to that idea I mentioned earlier of the ice crab, the crab that looks like it's made of ice. So here you can see me trying out some marker combinations of blues to try and get that kind of like shininess, but also that kind of bluey ice kind of quality. Then you've got pencil sketches that were going to be made into marker pieces at some point. And again, on this page, you've got some graffiti ideas, again, that I did uh, some marker roughs of this in preparation of doing a sort of proper good marker piece. And here you've got another picture done from a reference photograph using watercolor markers. And this is a little wooden sculpture from Speak Hall near Liverpool. And uh, took the photo, had it lying on my phone and decided I would have a go at doing it using watercolor markers. Again, quite pleased with the way that one went. 
Here you got some um, hand sketches from sculptures that I saw at the Walker Art Gallery when I visited there last year. So I just took quick clicks of all of the hands on the sculptures and then I can go away at my leisure and do studies using all different media, ink, pencil and so on. Here you can see a couple of studies of things, designs that I've seen that I like, you know, a stained glass window and the top of a marmalade jar. And then in here you can see just some thumbnail planning of a video that I was going to make, an instructional video. And on the right, a bit of fan art. You can see me get into my fan art groove with Professor Pericles from um, Scooby-Doo Mystery Inc. And then flipping over the page, the first thing is an idea after watching Tron, I decided maybe I should do a flower using those kind of blue neon light effects from the movie Tron. And on the right hand side, you can hopefully see the evolution of a graffiti name. You know, the first one at the top, then the second one slightly more refined, and the third one even more refined, hopefully, than I'm going to do at some point. Uh, flipping over the page, you can see the Stone Temple Pilots graffiti. That is the marker rough that I did uh, for the watercolor marker piece that you may or may not have seen a video of that I dropped a, a few months back. And here you can see me trying out all different color schemes using different colors of the markers that I would then have to try and show you using watercolor markers. Then you can see the back of my sketch, but where all the sort of rubbish kind of accumulates photos, bits of paper. And that's the front cover of this particular sketchbook so that I stuck it at the back. So if I ended up liking it and loving the thickness and the weight of the paper, I'd know what kind of sketchbook I needed to get next time to get something that was the same. So with that sketchbook out of the way, I've got my eyes on next year's sketchbook, which is a little bit more ambitious. It's just shy of A4 size, and it's very, very thick with a lot more pages in it. And look at that. That drawing, that sketch copy is from May 2004. So yes, it's yet another sketchbook that I bought, did about two pages in, and then has been left on the shelf. So that is my mission for the rest of 2020, to get this big sketchbook filled. Thanks for watching.